Hi, this is Janet from Living the Light Photography Blog. Today we're going to make a short video on how to take pictures of the Proceed Meteorite Shower. The Meteorite Shower happens every year in August and this year it's falling on August 11th, 12th and 13th. I went onto the Skywatch website to find out the best viewing times and according to the website it is in the early mornings of either of those days, so somewhere between 1 o'clock and 4 o'clock. According to the website, they said August 13th was going to be the peak time, and again between 1 o'clock and 4 o'clock in the morning. So let's go through the things that you're going to need. First, you're going to need to find a place with a big sky like I have here, away from the city lights. Second, in the wee hours of the morning, it's going to be a little bit chilly. So bring a blanket, bring a chair, bring something warm to drink, and bring a flashlight so you can see where you're going and, and what you're doing. And always remember to be safe. It's best to go with a group of friends and also be way more fun. And um, just always be aware of your environment. So the next big question we have is what will our camera settings be? So let's take a look at that. Okay, let's take a look at our camera settings. I have my camera set in manual mode. I do most of my photography in manual mode. I find it gives me more creativity and more control over the pictures that I take. The next setting that you see is our shutter speed and I'm going to have it set at 15 seconds. When you see the two little lines beside the number that means it's in seconds. Normally you see your shutter speed shown as a fraction like 1 over 100 for example. That's 1 one hundredth of a second which is a fairly fast shutter speed. For this um, taking pictures of the meteors we want to have a really slow shutter speed so we can really capture the light and the trails of the meteors. So 15 seconds will be a good starting point. Next is um, I want my aperture to be as wide open as possible and with the lens I'm using I can go as wide as 3.5. That will vary depending on the lens that you're going to use but you want to have the widest setting that you possibly can. Next is ISO 400 and this is a nice middle of the road ISO to use for night photography. Anything lower doesn't give in enough light and anything higher starts introducing sort of a grainy look. Again, we're not going to pay attention to our little heart setting that you see in the middle there. And our next setting is going to be white balance. That's that little cloud. And I like to have my white balance set on cloudy. I just like the warm tone that it gives to a lot of my pictures. You can change that to anything you like. It's fun to experiment using incandescent or tungsten. Um, it gives a different look to the picture and um, always good to experiment. Next is um, the MF, that's manual focus. I have my lens set on manual focus. We'll give a, have a look at that in a couple of minutes. Next, um, with the slow shutter speed, I want to use a self timer to take a picture. Whenever you're using a slow shutter speed, you want to have a self timer or a remote shutter release. That way you're not introducing any extra camera shake into the picture. The next, that little square with a dot in the middle, I like to have my camera set on center metering. That tells the camera to use the center point of the picture to evaluate um, all the information it needs to create the picture. And the last setting for sure is your battery. Make sure your battery is fully charged and if you have a spare battery, bring it along. There's nothing worse than being out taking pictures and running out of battery. So always, always make sure your battery is full. So let's go have a look at what our lens settings is going to be like on the actual lens. Okay, so I'm using my wide angle lens and it's a 15 to 85 and I have it on manual focus, you can see there. I've also turned my stabilizer off. When you have your camera on a tripod and the stabilizer is on, Sometimes it still thinks that it needs to um, stop camera shake and it actually then adds camera shake. So whenever you have your camera on a tripod, turn the stabilization off and you will, interestingly enough, get clearer pictures. Now since it's going to be really dark and the camera won't exactly know where to focus on, I have changed it to manual focus. But I don't know if you can see right here, right here is my focus ring and you can see it changes and I want to set it on infinity. That's that little number that you see there that looks like a sideways 8. That way then when I look through the viewfinder, I can turn it and so I can see that the stars are in focus, well as best as focus as we can, and then um, we'll get a nice clear shot. 
Okay, we're all ready to go. We have our camera settings, our camera is on the tripod, our chair is set up, we have a blanket, flashlight. Yeah, we're all set to go. So just remember that the camera settings that I've chosen are just a guideline, um, but it is important that you have a camera that you can put on manual and that you can do a long exposure with. So please um, check back in a few days. I will post pictures on my website. I've put the link at the end of this video and I would love to hear back from you and see what pictures you got as well. So have a great time and I look forward to hearing from you.